Hello and welcome back to the Pitch Report. Chelsea had an up and down season. They had a rocky start to the season, but managed to find their footing at the end. They managed to pick five wins in their last games and managed to clinch the sixth spot in the league. Following the campaign and the troubles that came with fans were a bit divided with Pochettino staying. He found his team in groove. His press conference didn't inspire faith in him staying. Chelsea decided to part ways and bring in Enzo Maresca to lead their project in the next five years. Over the course of the season, one major flaw of Pochettino was his team never found an identity. They didn't have a set style or principle of play. It felt like a lot of things was left to the players. For a young team as the Blues have, it comes with a lot of problems. They were inconsistent. Pochettino was dealt a few bad hands on various occasions with injuries. He parted ways mutually with the Blues. Now, Chelsea has been on the market and have found their new manager. This time around, the stakes are higher because it's twice now that the board has been wrong. Will Maresca be the solution? Let's find out. Maresca has a very strong tactical identity. In his first full season in men's football management, he has managed to bring Leicester from the championship into the Premier League through automatic qualification. He won it. His achievement is no small feat. One thing about his Leicester side is they have a well-defined style of play. It is reminiscent of Pep City, and at this point that comes with every disciple of his. His style is very much possession-focused with quick transitions. In simple terms, he is a mix of Roberto De Zerbi and Pep Guardiola. His team lines up in a 4-3-3 or variation of that in a 4-2-3-1 on the call sheet, but in games they change shape, they change into a 3-2-4-1. He inverts the fullback to give this shape. With the teams that they play 4-3-3, most of the time, when they are attacking, they just defend with three players. That means the two central defender and the old midfielder because fullback is higher, fullback is higher. This is for superiority in the midfield. He overloads his opponents in the middle of the park, meaning there is always an extra man. What this does is it offers control and possession and provide five players in place to defend against counterattacks. You know, the reason why we try to bring the fullback inside is defensively. Maresca's system needs a goalkeeper who is good with ball to feet. When they are pressed, his defense drop deep and the keeper joins to form a four at the back while maintaining his midfield superiority. If the opponent's press isn't as high, his center backs push up and spreads a little wide to play with the back three bases. The inverted fullback is another key in his system. He must be able to play in tight spaces and have comfort in traffic. Chowdhury and Perriera were handed those duties most of the time. The former is a midfielder by trade and he feel at home in the base of the midfield. The pivot is the building block of attack and defense. The pivot forms a box with the central center back and they keep in 4-2 shape to build around the press. They generate traffic and bait teams that press high into a quick transition. The wingers stay high and wide and are ready for 1v1 duels. The double eights high up or the attacking midfielder's run moves into the half spaces and joins the attack. In this congested midfield, that where the magic happens. Depending on the opponent, the job of the attacking midfielders differs. The right-sided attack midfielder plays higher most often in the left half space. In some situations, he moves high enough to be the most advanced player in the attack line or close enough to be front two with the striker as a complement. The left side attacking midfielder was where the invention came from Maresca's Leicester. They are the key to the team's tactical flexibility and attack. In its well-drilled pressing side, for example, against Liverpool, Casadia, the left sided attacking midfielder kept dropping closer to the pivot to provide a third lane to progress the ball forward. In some instances, it was close enough to form a base of three midfielders with a complement attacking midfielder form or front two. Drewsbury Hall was the creative spark of Maresca's team. He recorded the best goal assist numbers, his best campaign yet. He played well in between the lines, connecting the attack and build up. He has some good combination with Mavidi, the left winger who stayed high wide for the most part. As mentioned prior, his wingers are 1v1 specialists and they stay high and hug the touchline to stretch the pitch. 
The striker isn't a passenger here. He isn't afforded the freedom that Hallen gets for Pep City. Here they are integral part of the attack. They offer an outlet and build up. They occupy the center backs. In other situations, the striker drops into the midfield when they are matched to give back the midfield numbers advantage. This draws out the opponent's center backs. He can now play in the runners from midfield and behind. In defense, the press of press on the midfield are receiving. The pressing trigger is usually the return pass. The teams fall back into a 4-4-2 when the opponent makes it past their press. They form a mid-block shape. Maresca gives his flanking fullbacks a chance to be aggressive on runners in their box. They have the freedom to move high up in the midfield sometimes. The side center backs in his defense are aggressive to pick up runners into the box. They close in on them and make sure that the threat is neutralized. The weakness of his side is the focus on keeping possession. They can be slow to act against low blocks. Also against well-coordinated presses, when the outball fails, they leave themselves huge space in the center of the pitch between the low buildup and the striker. This gives the opponents huge spaces to run into and attack. It gives his opponents an easy counterattack. With all this down, how will his Chelsea play? The Blues aren't strangers to having fullbacks invert. Porch implemented similar tactics in the final stages of his season. We see some similarities in their Spurs return fixture. The inversion came on the left this time around. This sparked some of the best form we have ever seen Cucurella in at Chelsea. The wingers stayed wide to stretch the pitch. This had Palmer and Connor sharing the double tens role. There are more similarities than what we have here, but Chelsea didn't have a full set of players available when their season was ending. Everyone expected to be fit and available for next season raises some questions. I have some few predictions on how his Chelsea team will look. There is a chance that we will see James in the midfielder playing a bit more reserved in right center back spot. Madiwik had a good end of the season at right wing spot and Cole Palmer operated more centrally. Jackson link up and how comfortable he is with the ball possession seems to be a good fit to lead the line once again next season. He will need to do better on his finishing because his position will be under threat with Nkunku starting the season fit. The left wing is still out for debate. Sterling had some great games taunting fullbacks out wide this season. Kyle Walker will attest to that. He needs to be consistent or he may lose the spot once. Enzo and James carry some of the big question on where and how they will be used. The transfer window is also a big factor. Will we be seeing Nkunku as 9 10 on the wings? How does this affect Sterling? The biggest question out of all this is, will Gallagher be around next season? He was such a big part of Chelsea and had a great season. What is Chilwell future at the club? Maresca won't be starting on a blank slate. The Blues are looking to build their dynasty with Enzo Maresca and have shown faith in him with a five-year contract. Things will look different at the bridge next season and his appointment have fans a little anxious. This is a big risk and I hope it pans out for Chelsea. Maresca has good springboard to work from. They can't keep getting it wrong because the loopholes will catch up to them at some point. Next season will have a lot of good tactical battles all around. Arteta's arsenal has fully arrived. We will like to see some good games between Pep and his protégés. The standard at Chelsea seems not to be dropping and the fans will accept nothing less than a Champions League qualification.